This is a car's newest HomeKit camera, the G2H Pro, an updated version of the original G2H camera, one of my favorite HomeKit cameras. And today we'll compare the pros and the cons between both of these cameras and see which camera is the better option for your smart home. Now full disclosure, Akara did send this camera out to me for a review, but as always, I will be honest with you guys and let you know the good and the bad about this camera. On the outside, you'll notice both cameras look identical. You still have the lens and the mic on the front, a speaker on the back for two way talk, a slot for a micro SD card on the bottom, and the home kit code that is under the base. The mounting options are the same as well. Both include a magnetic base that can rotate 360 degrees to mount in multiple angles or even upside down, which can be handy. Or it can be mounted on the wall with the included magnetic mount and screws or adhesives. So on the outside of these cameras, nothing has really changed, but on the inside, this is where everything has changed with a bunch of new features. There are five noticeable different that you should know about before buying the pro model for your smart home. The first difference that you'll notice right away is the video quality. And there's something strange that you'll notice. So both cameras have 1080p quality, but the pro model tends to not be as bright and is darker than the non-pro model. Faces are easier to see on the non-pro G2H model, but motion smoothness is slightly better on the pro model. The non-pro model of the G2H camera has a 140 degree ultra wide field of view with a lens correction option that will zoom into a 110 degree field of view to help reduce the fisheye lens look that you see on cameras with a wide field of view. And the pro model of the G2H has a 146 degree field of view. The G2H Pro has a wider fisheye lens look that I'm personally not a fan of and it does not have the lens correction feature so you're stuck with this view. But the Pro model does offer more video features that you may want or may need that we will look at later on in the video. When it comes to night vision, the G2H Pro uses a different style of night vision LEDs than the non-pro model to help reduce the red IR lights that you see in the dark. This actually makes objects or faces much clearer to see when you're up close and you don't get a blown out image compared to the non-pro camera. However, on the flip side, because these LEDs aren't as bright or as strong, this means it's a little difficult to see objects or faces that are further away. The non-pro G2H has brighter LEDs and does a better job at illuminating objects or faces that are further away. Audio quality on the Pro model has improved drastically over the non-Pro model. The Pro model is now much louder and easier to understand what somebody is trying to say where on the non-pro model, the audio quality tends to be a bit more muffled and it's not as easy to hear or understand what somebody is trying to say. This is an audio test between the G2H camera, the non-pro model and the G2H Pro. I am talking to the camera is about three feet away and this is how the audio sounds on the non-pro model and this is how the audio sounds on the pro model. Let me know what you guys think about how the audio quality sounds down in the comments below. Next is smart home integration and both of these cameras work with HomeKit and IFTTT but the Pro model also works with Google and Amazon and other smart platforms. But in this video, we'll just be looking at what it can do in HomeKit. And this is where you will see the biggest differences between these cameras. Both models have a motion sensor exposed for using in automations and have the ability for two-way talk. So you can talk to somebody and hear them back straight from the Home app. And the Pro model brings a much requested feature to HomeKit that I'm very excited to see. And that is a built-in security system. There's an alarm tile in the Home app that has four different different security modes that are exposed and they each make a different sound for each mode. You can choose to show as a single or a group tile and have the status of the secure system at the top of the app to quickly manually arm or disarm or change the modes from the home app or use automations to have the system automatically change modes. And then your Akara devices will respond accordingly based on the mode settings set up in the Akara app. So if an Akara contact sensor is opened while in away mode, then it could sound an alarm. And later on in the video, I will show you how you can actually add your own custom sounds and ringtones straight to the camera. Both cameras support HomeKit secure video, which is Apple's cloud recording and will encrypt your footage from the last 10 days on your HomeKit hub, then securely upload it to your iCloud account. The recordings won't count against your iCloud storage plan 
and only you and the people you share your cameras with have access to this footage. HomeKit Secure Video also enables different types of motion alerts like package detection or facial recognition and using the photos in your iCloud library, it can actually show you who was in the footage as well as having activity zones so you'll only be notified if motion is in a specific area. There's one major problem though with using the Pro model in HomeKit that the Acara G3 has as well. And that is that the Pro model will always start recording motion clips way too late and then cut off the clip way too early. When I was recording the audio test from multiple distances, the Pro model would record after I had already been talking for like 15 seconds, then would only record for like 10 seconds or so, then start recording late again. I thought this was a HomeKit issue, but I tried the same test using the non-Pro model and it was able to record much longer clips, up to minutes of footage without stopping and starting again and this has been very frustrating to view past motion recordings for this reason local storage is a great option for 24 7 recording and thankfully both cameras support local storage with a micro SD card the pro model now supports up to 512 gigabytes of storage versus 32 gigabytes on the non pro model the pro model also has NAS support via Simba if you like to mirror your footage to a local NAS in the Akar app you can view the footage from various days and scroll through or zoom in and out and can be configured in the app to record continuously or only during motion alerts. And speaking of the Akara app, you do get more features with the Pro model than you would get with the non-Pro model. One of which being a privacy occlusion area, which allows you to block off certain areas that you don't want the camera to see or record. And these blocked off areas are synced over in the home app and the camera won't detect motion in these areas. There is a time lapse feature as well. So you can see a time lapse of, let's say what your dogs have been up to all day. And one of the biggest new features of the Akara G2H Pro is the ability to add custom sounds or a custom ringtone to the camera. There's a new ringtone library that stores your own ringtone sounds or music to the camera that can be used in automations. Files can be uploaded via iCloud Drive or from on your iPhone and .mp3 files work the best. So if motion has been detected, then it could play a sound that you prefer instead of one of the pre-made options. Welcome home, Adam, the master of the house. Hope you had a good day. I've set the house to warm and the TV is on. I'll be here to control your devices. Have a good evening. Now what makes these cameras stand out from other Honka cameras is that they are a Zigbee 3.0 hub for other Akara child devices. Akara has a whole line of smart devices with sensors, cubes, switches, and you need a hub, which is called the parent, to connect the other devices called a child together. Akara offers different kinds of hubs that have specific features like lights, a wired connection, so you can find one that best suits your needs. The Pro model now supports up to 128 child devices connected to it, versus 64 child devices on the non-Pro model. Now natively, these child devices don't work with HomeKit, but the hub will actually expose all of these devices and their attributes to the home app. Now keep in mind that the Akara hub has to be online for any of the child devices to work. If the camera is offline, then the child devices will say no response and will not work. And in the Akara app, the camera can record when the status changes of one of your devices. Like if a door has been opened, then the camera will record those events and mark them on the video timeline so you can see all of your events in one place. All in all, I think the G2H Pro brings some much needed features over the non-Pro model and is a good upgrade. But are these features enough to get you to upgrade from the non-pro model or are you even going to buy the pro model at all? Let me know down in the comment section below and here's how this Akara device overhauled my entire HomeKit smart home and I'll see y'all in the next one.